uh, with uh, Yasser Ahmed and uh, Jay Patel. Yasser Ahmed uh, from the Bolton Council of Mox and Jay Patel from the Hindu Forum of Bolton. One of the great things about the India in Britain is that it is organized into communities, uh, whether they be around faith or they be around culture or they be around the history of origin, so community from Gujarat or community from southern India. And these communities exist where people come together regularly, celebrate festivals, uh, social events, etc., and stay connected with one another and in their own way keep their identity uh, without necessarily cocooning themselves into that community. Now, if you think from a point of view of government, when government wants to engage with people, when government wants to develop policies or provide services to people, one of the things which is easiest for government to do is to deal with a community rather than with an individual. Because then, if the community is organized, the government message can go across very quickly, very effectively to the people, and is also trusted by the people who receive it. Now, this is the kind of work that these two people with me uh, are doing. Uh, they are helping build that bridge between government and the community and in that sense helping to build a Britain which is inclusive just as the India is inclusive. So first Yasser, can you tell us a little bit about your practical work, what do you do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, some idea? Yeah, uh, Bolton Council of Mosques uh, is uh, an umbrella body for the 22 mosques in Bolton. Uh, approximately, uh, based on sort of more recent data, uh, you're looking at around 30,000 Muslims uh, in Bolton. So we work on a day-to-day -day basis. We're looking at we do youth work. We do work around you know bringing communities together. We do training and development. Uh, we do other capacity building work. Uh, we have a, a funeral service. We have a circumcision clinic. Uh, we do a whole variety of things. And my job very much involves bringing people together and enabling uh, people to actually you know, do what you've just said around working with the local authority, working with other partners and so forth uh, to share our thoughts, our views, uh, the way we want to do things, etc. Uh, and uh, share that with other partners. Wow. Uh, so you're, in a way, the work that you do is funded by the local council, by Bolton Council? Uh, we do get some of our some own funding uh, from the local authority and it's, it's uh, testimony to the relationship that we have with the, with the, the public sector mm. and it's uh, testimony to the foresight that people in the public sector in the, in the government have had around actually supporting grassroots communities and grassroots organisations with a pot of funding that can mobilise them and get them together. Uh, as you said, one of, the, one of the challenges we have is that obviously the Muslim community in Bolton is very diverse we have Indian, Pakistani, Somali, Arab, you know, loads of different uh, communities that make up that one sort of Muslim community. Uh, but by having an umbrella body, uh, people are able to liaise easily with that umbrella body. Otherwise, you'd have four or five different groups that you'd have to work with. So, mm -hmm. so it's having that foresight and that relationship that's, that's really helped us actually develop. Jay, uh, can you tell us about what you do to unite the Hindus? Um, <coughs> similar to Beacon, we are funded by the Bolton Council um, and we are an umbrella organization also. <coughs> we have five temples in Bolton which are affiliated with Hindu Forum and we also have 15 other community groups based around the family names, the traditional Indian Prajapatis, mysteries, etc. So they make up the membership of the Hindu Forum and they are, if you like, part of the management committee. Um, what do I do to unite the Hindus? The Hindus in Bolton at least we are very fortunate they are, they are a long established community and a well established community. Um, so what I try to do is to encourage them to work together mm. and specifically in some of the Hindu festivals what I would like to see is more cooperation and participation where we can have joint events. Um, we already do Dasera, we do Huri. Um, one of my plans is to have Diwali lights. Bolton is one of the few towns in, in the UK which has a sizable 
Hindu community. We have approximately 6,000 Hindus in Bolton, but we don't have Diwali lights. Um, I recently went to Bradford and I was surprised that they had Diwali lights. So I consider Bolton to have more Hindus in Bradford, so maybe not. <coughs> but that, that's some of the stuff I would like to do. Uh, the other stuff we're doing in terms of uniting uh, the Hindu and the communities is is the capacity building and the skills transfer. So we've got temples that are running yoga classes, we've got dome classes, uh, we've got the, the transferring of skills in making mitais, as, as you may or may not be aware, in Diwari where the uncourt is made, uh, my aim is that all the mitai for the uncourt is made in-house. And the first generation of people that settled in Bolton, whilst they are able to pass on their skills, I would like to encourage that uh, those skills are transferred to the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Now, there is something unique about one of the temples in Bolton, which I'm pretty sure you won't be aware of, is we have an all Hindu Scottish pipe band. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's only another one in the country that's in London, and, and that's our sister temple. The pipe band was started because uh, in 2007 we had a 100th anniversary mm. of our main temple in India. Mm. So from 2005 it was a wish of our Guruji that uh, we emulate the London band. And Bolton being a smaller town, we had just enough youngsters to put a pipe band together. Now it took them two years to practice mm. and by 2007 they were ready. And they did a seven hour procession in the Indian heat. Mm. <coughs> you know, the, the, the floats and the Nagayatras, and I think the youngest child we had playing the bagpipes, if you can imagine blowing all that time, was I think 11. Wow. So I, yeah, I get the impression that, you know, Bolton, uh, with all the work, especially in the leadership of the county council, there is a, a practical, proactive attempt to build this kind of harmony and cohesion within the communities and to have people like you working with them of course makes a big difference. One of the aims of the Masala tour is that some of the ideas and wisdoms which are latent within India, within our religions, within our cultures, our lifestyles, are also relevant to the whole of Britain. And let's take the example of uh, health and yoga, for example, you know. Yoga is a very old Indian uh, tradition and uh, uh, it costs very little uh, to run a yoga class, but the, the effect of somebody practicing yoga is huge in terms of their health, their mind, body and spirit. So I mean, is there, if I were to cite those examples, and given that you work with the councils and the local authorities, do you feel that the ideas and the wisdom that you bring to the table are actually being taken account by wider Britain or wider Bolton and for example, say the, even the Muslim idea of uh, borrowing and uh, care, for, care in borrowing and also the interest rate idea that should, you know, we live, Britain is very profligate about its borrowing. You know, Britain does not understand that by borrowing, you, you actually incur a debt which can mount up over time. And actually it's better to live a life which is simple and borrow less so that you are not in debt. So a simple idea like that, do you get a chance to put it onto the table, to the council and say, can we, can we get this message across to the whole town of Bolton and not just keep it within the Islamic community? Absolutely, I think, I think we do get opportunities where we can share uh, a whole variety of you know, what we actually bring to the table. Uh, we do have, for example, an event uh, that we do in partnership with with the Hindu community, with the Interfaith Council, with the Christian community, which is called the Spirit of Bolton, and we have that sort of every year uh, on the on the actual town hall square, where we share a whole variety of things. So, so you know, we we can have, for example, someone from uh, HSBC or something who do the Islamic finance to have a stall there and sort of share that. But we can also have at the same time someone doing uh, a, a nazam or praying the Qur'an or doing henna painting or calligraphy as well and sharing that with the wider public. So we do do things at a very much a grassroots level. At a strategic level, we work together around developing sort of more ethical and moral leadership. So we have our own sort of leadership development program 
where we bring people from different faiths together uh, and develop leaders who will have a, a, a moral compass. Uh, and that's very much based on, you know, what we, what our parents brought here to this country from, from their own upbringing, which was about supporting communities, having a set of morals and values that you all aspire to and you must put in place first. So we do that, the same we do with the chaplaincy development programme that we have, which is again an interfaith one and Jay is involved in the next one. So uh, it's, it's not only the ideas around, for example, the interest and other things, uh, or the more grassroots sort of practical approaches to things like the making of Mitai, there's also issues about morality and what we believe and what we care about. Uh, so we are able to share things we are able to strategically influence things, yeah? Yeah, I think if I can add to that. <coughs> we work very closely together. Bolton is unique, and, and Yasser has already given credit to the, to the local council, but I just want to reiterate that with their vision 10 years ago, we're now in a position that, as an ethnic town, we are much stronger. One of the other unique things that we do jointly as the faith groups and with the Interfaith Council is we have something known as a faith trail. The Faith Trail is the opportunity for schools and for professional bodies, the NHS, the police, government staff, anybody who would benefit from learning about the other faiths, they're invited to come on a Faith Trail. They can visit a mosque, they will be given a tour, a speech, the basics of Islam, and they, they can then on the same day go move on to a temple, have a tour inside, the basics of Hinduism. Uh, and then, thirdly, a church. And at the end, there will be a multi-faith panel, a Muslim, a Hindu, and a Christian, to give those people or the school children the opportunity to compare what they'd seen that day and to ask questions. Um, and we found that it's very, very effective in the sense that it dispels myths. The thing with Britain is we are a multicultural society and that will never change. And the other unique thing is, although we integrate within the British society, I do not think the Asian communities will ever lose their identity. Therefore, it's important that we share our identity with the wider British society to say, look, we may look different, we may behave different, but we actually know different. We just have a different set of beliefs. And that faith trail has been an absolute success. And I think the beauty is, we can deliver it for nothing. We do not charge for that service, become in the forum, Christian cohesion. It's all part of their remit and their work. And it's something that other other councils in the country are actually trying to now set up. And to give you an example, we have schools visitors all the way from Cumbria, Merseyside. We have the Muslim girls school visiting us from Blackburn, mm -hmm. which we find quite a compliment, considering there are mosques in Blackburn. So it's, it's very unique and we're finding that the NHS and the police in particular when they recruit trainees they, they find that useful and something which I've done, part of Hindu Forum is I've created and published a booklet on the basics of Hinduism and every person who comes on a faith trail is given one free of charge to take home and just to gain, gain a flavour of Hinduism and hopefully as I said in my preface in the book it's not to answer every question, but it's to actually generate further questions so that they can then research the answers themselves.